Hello there everyone, UXW Bill here once again. A couple of days prior to creating and uploading this particular video, I created and uploaded a video featuring some goofing around with an old and presumably dead sealed lead acid battery. Now for those of you who are unfamiliar with the technology behind sealed lead acid batteries, they are very similar to the conventional wet lead acid batteries that you will find under the hood of most cars with a conventional internal combustion engine. You may also find a lead acid battery in a hybrid automobile, but more and more of them actually use the battery that provides power to the electric propulsion systems of the car to start the gasoline engine as well. The key difference between the lead acid battery that's in a conventional car with an internal combustion engine and a sealed lead acid battery is in fact the sealed aspect. These little sealed lead acid batteries are designed such that under normal operating conditions they cannot leak their internal contents out onto your floor or your table or wherever you might happen to be using them. And that's very important because most of them are designed to be used indoors around people where a car battery is typically located under the hood of the automobile and thus is somewhat isolated from the occupants of the automobile and under normal circumstances nobody is around such a battery. Now one thing that I do want to discuss before I get to the primary subject of this video is the most important aspect of all and that is your safety. Your safety cannot be underestimated and the parts of your body cannot generally be replaced. Thus, don't take chances and don't do stupid things. And realize that if you do anything shown in this video, you are doing so strictly at your own risk and I can accept no responsibility for the results, good or bad. Just please keep in mind that batteries and electrical devices in general can be very, very dangerous. Some batteries can produce extremely large currents that can result in enough, crea in enough heat being created to burn things or even start fires. The contents of batteries are nasty and batteries that are sufficiently mistreated can explode and do other bad things. A couple other things that I would like to touch on at least briefly. A little word to the YouTube engineers, though I'm sure absolutely none of them are watching these videos. This thing along the side of my videos, this needs to go bye-bye. At least the autoplay aspect of it. I am so tired of that stupid thing. I guess they figure that nobody wants to read video comments or descriptions anymore, and that behavior just drives me nuts. It's not the uploads, the playlist, that I really have a problem with. It is this stupid autoplay setting. Please! allow us to turn it off and save the state of it. Thank you very much. Speaking of other things that should have their state saved, how's about this bad boy? I don't care about top comments. All my comments are important to me. I want to see them newest first, chronological order. I'm not interested in any of this popularity crap, to put it very bluntly. I want to see the newest comments and I want that setting to be the default. Come on, you promised us much better commenting with Google+. And speaking of Google+, Although I don't know that I can find one here, I want to talk to a couple of people who leave comments on my video, and I'm going to speak very frankly. Here we have a comment from mwhite112393, who is by no means the only source of this particular problem. You may have noticed there's something missing from underneath this comment. It's the ability to reply to it. Well, let me just say that that really crosses my wires in a way that you can't imagine. So please, Check your Google Minus settings and make sure that people can reply to your comments. Also, please do not disable comments, replies to your comments on my videos. There is going to come a time when I am simply going to start deleting these comments because quite frankly, there is no point to leaving a comment if it can't be replied to. And I see it as nothing more, even though it was certainly not used here in that way, and I'm not trying to cast any aspersions whatsoever on mwhite112393 or anyone else who has done this as a vehicle for trolling that cannot be responded to. So I see no legitimate purpose for that. Please make sure that if you're going to comment on my videos, again, I welcome all comments, want to hear everybody's point of view, even critical points of view as long as they're constructive, just make sure that I can reply to them. The Dutch Owners Tech Channel absolutely nailed it when they said it's really annoying when commenters turn replying off. Okay, enough of that. The comment left by mwhite112393 also mentions, if there's any way to open it, you should give the Epsom salt vinegar trick a try. Well, this trick, 
is supposed to rejuvenate lead-acid batteries. I personally had never heard of using Epsom salt and vinegar in a battery, and I would not recommend it because I don't imagine that the chemicals are particularly compatible with one another. However, what I have heard of in the past, and what I discovered when I took one of these batteries apart one day, and I absolutely do not recommend doing this, is that you can sometimes see the caps, little rubber caps, over the surface of each cell. And if you can see those little rubber caps, which are actually the valve portion of the valve regulation mechanism in these batteries that's supposed to keep them from spewing liquid all over the place under normal circumstances, you can sometimes actually see the plates and the lead acid and the internal construction aspects of the battery. I, I did this many years ago when I was bored. I've said it in the past. A bored UXW Bill is a very, very dangerous thing, especially when he gets to taking apart batteries such as this. Well, a couple of people made comments along a similar vein suggesting, you know, hey, you should pr try popping the top off of that battery and see if you can get it to go again. Well, usually I don't even bother with that. I've done it in the past. The results haven't been very impressive. Usually because the batteries by that time are very, very worn out, and I felt that this one would be no different because it actually sat in an uninterruptible power supply, one of these little APC plug strips, which I generally have a very ra a rather low opinion of in my grandfather's basement for years. And I don't know how long it had been that that battery had been baked dry. It hadn't reached the point where the case had split, as once happened to Shadow Rider 460 here on YouTube, but it probably wouldn't have been too much longer if I hadn't happened to catch it. So I really thought that this particular battery featured in the goofing around video was well and truly finished. And so I subjected it to some very nasty experiments. I Not only did I try to run it down with the computer fan that you saw in the video, while well, I had a voltmeter hooked up to it to demonstrate just what incredibly sad shape it's in, I also took a screwdriver, and again, absolutely do not do this. Even if you think you're very sure of what you're doing, you can't be sure enough, and it's really, really dangerous. Because if you want to make a battery explode or produce a hell of a lot of heat in a hurry, shorting across the terminals is a good way to do it. But this battery was so weak and so dead that I just went ahead and shorted across the terminals with the screwdriver that you can actually see in the background of this video. Well, the other day I was bored once again, and so I cracked the top off of this battery and I just decided to go ahead and try it. I discovered that the internals of the battery were completely dried out. I figured it was probably hopelessly sulfated, hopelessly worn out. After all, this battery is essentially five years old. I bought it brand new in 2009. But I took it into the laundry tubs and I dribbled a little clean water into each of the uh, six or so valves after taking the little rubber caps off. And then I decided to see if it would take a charge. Now I would strongly suggest doing something like this outside because if the battery decides to do something bad, at least it'll only hurt something like your driveway or a patch of grass or a wood board or something. It won't uh, presumably potentially set fire to your entire house, which is something that I definitely recommend avoiding if at all possible. Well, much to my amazement, this battery actually did come up on the charger after I gave it some fresh water. I really did not expect it to happen. But if you look right here on my little old Lenovo IdeaPad S10 note netbook friend, which yes, is running Windows XP, and no, I don't care that it's out of support, and no, I haven't tried to enable the uh, POS Ready 2009 updates on it, because this is XP Home Edition, and well, I really don't care. Anyway, I have the APC PowerShoot software here. Now, I could have been a lot more hardcore about this. I could have used network UPS tools under uh, a Linux or FreeBSD system, or even built into uh, FreeNAS or NAS for free. I also could have used the APC UPSD tools that uh, ship with some Linux distributions, but hey, this was convenient, quick, and easy. My netbook was literally just a reach away. So I loaded the PowerShoot software on it, found a communications cable for this uninterruptible power supply, which was arguably the most difficult part of the uh, entire exercise. I, have, I had always kind of wondered why APC used these cables. I know, how many digressions can one have in this video? And I'm pushing 10 minutes here. I better get this wrapped up. But it turns out, not only is this little technique patented, putting an RJ45 connector on one end of the cable and a USB connection on the other, it's patented because 
As it turns out, they were actually running multiple interface standards across these uninterruptible power supplies for a while. This port is capable of communicating, or at least it is on better and older models of the UPS, such as this uh, Backup's R RS-1500. The early models had uh, dual communication support, both USB and serial, but this late production model does not. And these little plug strips never communicated over anything but USB. But I guess APC and Schneider Electric are pretty proud of themselves because they are abusing the United States and presumably other countries' patent systems as well to keep a monopoly on these little cables instead of using the conventional Type A, Type B USB arrangement. Fortunately, not that big of a deal if you don't have these. They're all, they almost always seem to be available on eBay for a couple dollars a piece. But enough of that. Back to the subject of the video here once again after another lovely digression. This battery has been steadily coming up. It's at 60% charge. You just saw it change right there. And it has been moving up steadily all night. I have no idea how long it will last now that it has been repaired, but I'll tell you what I'm going to do with it. It's not like these sealed lead acid batteries are really expensive. I bought this one for about $16 shipped on eBay, and I think you can even get them a little more cheaply than that, but I used a vendor who I've had good results with in the past. But... I decided to go ahead and re-enliven this thing. This is one, another one of these plug strip UPSs, and unfortunately people buy these all the time because they're cheap. They're about $30 a piece when you can find them on sale, which seems to be pretty much all the time. And I find them discarded by the score because what people don't realize is that they are not big enough to handle the needs of even a fairly energy efficient computer. These things are great, and the reason why I picked them up has to do with the fact that they are great. They are wonderful, in fact, if you want to power something like an internet wireless router or your internet service provider's modem to keep it running during a power outage. But even a nicely equipped laptop is probably going to be a little bit more than these things want to deal with. And of course, if you do hook up a regular desktop computer to one of these, they will try valiantly to keep it running, but it just it plays hell on the battery. It wears them out in very short order, and I find these things tossed out by the dozen. So I have quite a few of them. And I do find things to do with them, like powering aforementioned wireless routers and network devices that I want to stay running during power failures and really, really low energy usage computers and appliances built from computers and things along those lines. But they are really just not suitable. In fact, I actually uh, hooked this one recently. Somebody had the audacity to leave a comment on my video saying that uh, I had stolen computers from my work and that it was stupid to post it on YouTube. The stupidest thing I ever heard of. I have never stolen anything a day in my life, at least not in the commonly accepted definition of stealing anything. Have I hooked a few things that look like they might be in loose hands? Yeah, I probably have, and I think the statute of limitations has expired on most of them. But I'm talking about stuff like this particular unit, which I actually found sitting... Uh, my non-US viewers will not be familiar with this, but I actually saw this sitting at the exit to uh, in a Best Buy store recently. They have a big bin there that they provide for the recycling of nickel metal hydride, nickel cadmium, maybe even lithium ion batteries of all types. And someone had just dumped this on top of the bins. And I decided, you know, I think I can make it out of the store with this. They're never going to miss it. They probably don't want to deal with a sealed lead acid battery in that recycling bin. So I just quietly hooked it. Of course, the battery was cooked. So I bought a new one, but right now I'm using it as something of a surrogate charger to see if I can bring this one back up. I'll go ahead and glue the top back down on this, but I have tested it. I let this sit on the charger all last night, which probably wasn't the smartest thing to do since I wasn't down here all night to look after it. And then I pulled the plug with this netbook running not only distributed.net, but also charging its battery via the AC power adapter and installing a couple of delayed Windows updates, which ordinarily I do not recommend delaying. But in this case, I just don't use the machine a lot, so they'd had the occasion to build up over a couple of months. Well, I went ahead and plugged this in, and then I watched videos on YouTube, and even though this is not the right battery for this ES500 back UPS, it is, it did, hold that load for basically a half an hour before that battery quit. So I think there's a good possibility <laughs> that that battery might actually recover. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it in this, 
set this thing up doing some non-critical thing or another, write the date on the bottom of it, or refer to this video, although typically I write the dates on all of these when I put batteries in them, and I will just see what ends up happening and how long it lives. It could be a very, very interesting experiment, and if it actually works, it will be the first time that it has ever worked for me. Well, heaven knows I have certainly rambled on badly enough in this video. I have vented my obnoxious opinions, probably annoyed some people, bored others. I expect fully to get a ton of dislikes to this thing. But never mind that. Thank you for watching this if you have indeed made it this far, and feel free to leave a comment if you have one. But please, make sure that I can, in fact, reply to what you have to say.